you know, becoming passionate about beer and sharing that with as many people as you are right now? Um, it, it started out of desperation. <laughs> uh, when, when I got interested in learning beer styles, most of the expertise is a plane flight from my home. And it turns out there's not an abundance of experti- beer expertise in South Carolina. So in order to get my Cicerone, you really need to sit across the table with an expert and taste things together and then hear what they perceive and then you share what you perceive and and you begin to learn, kind of like learning a foreign language. So I had seen a couple of live streams on other subjects, it was food subjects, and I thought, well, I can do that, and I'll see if somebody is willing to do it. So uh, I did business development for 40 years, and I've learned there's no point starting at the bottom, so start at the top. So I contacted John Palmer. Now, that may not be a name familiar with you, but he's probably uh, one one of the more famous beer authors out there. And... I said, John, uh, I know you do podcasts, and, but have you ever done a live stream? And if you'll do it, I'll get the audience. I didn't know how I was going to do that, but I was counting on his name to carry it, not mine, because nobody knew who I was. And he said, sure. And so I found a platform. We did it. Um, it drew 150 people. And we got done. He said, that was so much fun. Let's find a couple more. I want to do a couple more. But one of my biggest struggles through all of that was not the platform and really not getting the guests. It was actually enough bandwidth from my home. So I was periodically putting up with dropouts and the chat would say, Doug, we're not seeing your camera. (laughs) Okay, it'll recover in a minute, maybe. (laughs) And... My cable company never could figure it out. So, you know, I was I was a year and a half into this. Maybe longer, really, but we'll call it a year and a half. And my cable company said, well, we can double your bill and we'll give you 20 megabits per second. And I really didn't know what I needed, but I had heard from enough people. They said I only needed four or five megabits per second upload speed. So what was the issue? And I really suspected my cable company wasn't giving me what I was paying for. And, and I told you earlier, it was kind of funny, during our event we had last week, unbeknownst to me, uh, I had a cable running under my desk that I was apparently standing on. And I had pulled my network cable loose and I didn't know it. And. <laughs> Fortunately, the Speedify was on another connection. Well, it's a, it's a, well, it's not a wireless connection, but it's, anyway, it was on a separate cable. So we were running our whole event on my hotspot, which is three stories up in the attic, and, and I didn't even know it. I never realized that I had lost all network connection <laughs> because Speedify just made it so seamless. I never knew it. As a matter of fact, I started looking and I said, why is my network down? And why am I still seeing people on screen? And then I realized Speedify had just completely switched over and it was, I was oblivious to it. So, I mean, it was really kind of neat and <laughs> completely unintentional. And so anyway, when I did install it, it, it was really... <laughs> It was like magic because all of a sudden I had I had doubled my speed because I was bonding a uh, standalone hotspot that I had placed in my attic, which was mostly a backup, and my network was fully accessible. I wasn't having trouble trying to attach a, a, a second wide area network device to a cable-based network and working out all the network 
challenges that there are to work out there that are, that are beyond my expertise, and I didn't want to hire somebody to do it. So it was really, it was like flipping a light switch. Uh, after, <laughs> after I installed it, it was kind of like, wow, my speed has really doubled. I can see my whole network. My processor is not burdened at all. And I can see the bandwidth, what level I'm at. I can run speed tests. <laughs> it, was, it was everything I had been looking for and I wish I had found it a year and a half ago. <laughs> so, and, I, and you know, it, it, it truly is. So I'm, as I'd said before, now I'm looking at doing these large scale conferences. I've done some 800 person events and I want to get larger ones going. And I feel like I can do it with some confidence now because with Speedify, I've got the backup. And as I just proved to myself accidentally, it's a darn good backup. <laughs> Anything interesting that, that you have planned coming up? We'd love to hear about all of that. As a result of sorting all this out, I can now feel pretty confident that I'm not going to embarrass myself in a large event by having my signal drop out because I mean you really are at the mercy of the cable companies and you don't know how much bandwidth they oversell and since COVID hit it just seems like they have been worse than ever I mean you are on a party line so you're at their whims of their throttling back or, or whatever they choose to do and so I feel like and, and of course my AT&T hotspot but I'm sure that's a factor with them too. But I feel like if I've doubled, I mean, it's kind of like I've looked at it like a highway. You know, you can either have a four lane highway or an eight lane highway. Now, you can't necessarily go any faster than 55 on an eight lane highway versus a four lane highway. But if there's eight lanes, you can always keep going 55. And I feel like I just added four more lanes to my, to my, whole systems here so I now I'm on an eight lane road and I'm not entirely dependent on one uh, internet provider I've got two of them working to help keep me going with with different priorities and that's okay because Speedify finds the sweet spot between them and Speedify you know works really well I've got the hotspot as secondary and I've got the cable as primary and I initially had them set both for primary, and so it was it was running up some data on the hotspot, which I didn't get any complaints from AT&T, but I was concerned. So I switched the hotspot to secondary, and I could watch there on the graph. You know, it'll just pick up every now and then, so my data usage on the hotspot dropped considerably. But just like earlier or last week, it you know, immediately switched over and went 100% hotspot when there was a problem. So I feel like I've maximized my use of cable and minimized the hotspot data, and, and Speedify seems to take care of it seamlessly.